What's up, guys? It's Kyle with Never Hedge, and it feels good to have some UFC back. We have Dana White's Contender Series to start the week, and we got a good UFC card fighting this weekend. So uh, lots of UFC, lots of NFL content, lots of college football, um, but it feels really good to be covering some fights. I uh, can't wait to win some money this week on these fights. Got crushed in the NFL. Um, learned some things. We're going to bounce back like always, but Week one NFL is always a crapshoot. Um, let's start off with the main event here for Dana White Contender Series. So it's a 205 weight division. We have Jelton Almeida, 13 and 2, uh, plus 185 underdog versus Nazardine Nazardinoff, minus 225. If you look right here, uh, we're on ESPN and it shows their height difference. The height difference for Jelton, he's 6'3, 205. Nazarene six foot, but he's going to have a eight inch reach advantage for Jailton Almeida. Um, let's just get into the two fighters. Almeida is 13 and two. He's on an eight fight winning streak. He's extremely active within that winning streak. He has four grappling fights and one MMA fight this year. He won all his grappling matches as well as his UFC uh, MMA fights. Almeida is huge. He's extremely good on the ground. And one thing I love about Almeida is hearing his most recent interview. He knows his strengths, and he knows that his style of wrestling and grappling is hard to beat. His idol is Khabib, and he said, in quotes, it's a different game, Khabib style. No one can stop that game. I'm very versatile. I can trade on the feet and take you down. I watch a lot of videos of Khabib and try to do his game as much as possible. It's an aggressive style, takedowns and submissions or ground and pound finish. Khabib is a reference for me. And that is something I love, love hearing. It's interesting that it's happening against a Russian fighter in Nazardin Nazardinov, who is undefeated at 9-0, but he hasn't fought in over a year. He does have crisp striking with very fast hands, and he has shown good power takedowns. Um, kind of the exact Russian style that we've seen all these guys come over here with. Um, but the thing for me is that eight inch reach advantage. Almeida will also be the bigger man by a good margin. He's jacked as hell. He hits hard. And if he comes out here there with that Khabib style of just in your face wrestling, I think Nazardine's going to gas. And I think when he gasses, Almeida is going to find that sub. He's too good on the ground to gas for. So I think Almeida, if he follows that style, and just pressures doesn't allow Nazardine to get off his punches. I think that Almeida wins this fight, and he's a good dog to start uh, to end the card with. Next fight is a lock of the night in Mo Miller. If you watch the weigh-ins, Mo Miller was three times the size of this guy, Brandon Lewis. Brandon Lewis is only 5'4", 135. He has a 65-inch reach, where Mo Miller is 5'8", and has a 72-inch reach. Mo Miller, a uh, college wrestler, he had five years uh, college wrestling. He's 5-0, and oh, and his last win we saw an awesome slam TKO. He has good trips. He gets you off balance. He knows how to use that wrestling. He shoots in fast and quick, gets on, the, on those legs. And he's going to be this, not only the bigger man, he's the superior athlete in this fight. Um, and his, his striking is improving every fight. He's one of those guys. He's so athletic. He's going to be a monster. Um Lewis, he's also 5-0. He's got two KOs and a sub to his name. His last win was by split. Uh, he's very well-rounded. He's one of those guys who uh, – he's one of the new age guys. Grew up in MMA, not necessarily one specific way of fighting. He grew up doing MMA, so he's one of the new breed. But he's running into Mo Miller. Mo Miller is going to dominate this fight. He's going to slam Brandon Lewis's small ass all over, all over this ring. Um Mo Miller also, he, tra he trains with Stipe. Uh, that's another just fun point. Uh, gotta love Stipe. Gotta love Mo Miller. I know he's a huge, huge favorite. They got him at 490. It's worth the chalk. It's one of those fights you're not going to lose. So if you if you put up the chalk, you're going to make money. Next fight, we have another big favorite in Albert Durev, minus 360 versus Chow Bittencourt. We see the sizes. Derev's 5'11", 185, versus Chow, 6'185", but their reach is identical, only an inch separating them in height as well, so they size up pretty good. Good. Derev is 32 years old, Russian fighter, and he hasn't lost since 2014. 
One problem is he hasn't fought since 2018. Uh, what he has done since then is get himself in hot water over comments of a beheading a French teacher. Um, the, this French teacher apparently showed Muhammad uh, in, a Im in an image form trying to uh, go over free freedom of speech. Well, Albert Durev didn't like that and joked about the beheading of this teacher and got himself in this uh, hot water there. Back to fighting, he is very diverse striker, and he has power in his hands. He uses a power double to get his opponents to the mat when he wants to, but really his striking is what shines. Um, he strangles guys when he gets them to the ground. When he gets guys to the ground, he moves effortlessly through them like butter and knife, knife and butter, uh, and he loves choking guys unconscious. Um, that's what he does. Bittencourt is kind of a journeyman. He's 14 and 6, and he also hasn't fought since 2018. He is on an eight-fight winning streak with his last win coming by TKO in only 50 seconds. He's slightly taller, and he does hit pretty hard for the weight division. Um, so Bittencourt's only shot here is by Fluky KO. I know they haven't fought in a while, so maybe you don't want to lay minus 360. I think I'm going to stay away. Uh, but I don't see Durev losing um, any aspect of this fight. He's, he's the better overall fighter. So next fight was a matchup we already broke down a couple weeks ago. It got rescheduled for here. Uh, Lucas Bresky versus Dylan Potter. Bresky 6'4", Potter 6'2". Bresky weighed in 236, and Dylan Potter weighed in 225, man. He's got to cut some weight. Bresky's reach, he's got a 1H reach advantage. And uh, Lucas Bresky, he's a Polish heavyweight. He's 6'4", and he's a guy he, who, who can still fill out his frame a little bit, 236. He has a big frame, um, same kind of style as uh, Stipe. Uh, he has some takedown defense problems, but he's a kid who fits the bill for a UFC heavyweight. He's aggressive, hits hard. The only issues I've seen are with the takedowns. Dylan Potter, he was a last-minute replacement a couple weeks ago, so now he has had a couple weeks to train. He's 1-1 one one in his last two and has an up-and-down MMA career. He's very undersized, as you see, for 225, 6'2". Uh, he'd be way better suited at 205. He's got to cut that weight. Uh, the size is going to be a huge problem here. Luka Bresky is way bigger. I know he struggles. When Lucas Bresky does struggle in his career, I know he's only had one loss and one draw, but it was to a bigger heavyweight with wrestling, and that's just not the case with Dylan Potter. Uh Bresky wins this pretty easily, and he's blown up to minus 400, so it's not even worth betting. Next fight is Ans Lusa, 7-1. He's plus 105 underdog. He is 5'10 versus Jack Della Maddalena. He's 9-2. He's 5'11, 170 pounds, one-inch reach disadvantage for Maddalena. Uh, Maddalena is 9-2 with a nine-fight winning streak, so he lost his first two fights and bounced back and has – kept going. Uh, he, I, he, I read an interview with him and his coach, and he was talking about how when he was 0-2, his coach just said, hey, man, let's get to 4-0. Let's get to 6-0. And they just kept going, and he's now on a nine-fight winning streak. Uh, and he just recently avenged one of his losses with a first-round TKO. Pretty good run. Um, his eight TKOs and one sub, he does not go to decision. He's only 24 years old and is fighting out of Australia. Uh, he's got good striking with good power. And, uh, like he said, he knows when to turn it on. He said, I know when I got guys hurt, I don't necessarily have the best power, but I know when to, I've hurt guys and I know when to go for the kill. He's, he's one of those Australian guys, like all these Volkanovsky, Mark Hunt. He looks up to all those Australian fighters. Uh, and I like his approach to the sport. He's, he takes it very professionally. Lusa, on the other hand, 7-1. and one, And his record's pretty interesting. <clears throat> he hasn't fought since 2019, where he won a split decision. A year prior, he has a split loss. And before that, he took a two-year layoff after winning a fight by TKO. The guy he fought retired via exhaustion. So not very really a great win. Uh, he has eight fights, but dating back to 2013, he's not active at all. Super weird. Uh, he's a training partner of Gilbert Burns, and there's a weird video of them slap boxing online if you wanted to look that up. Um, he looks the part, though. He's extremely jacked, looks super athletic. He does have some flash knockouts. Um, we just haven't seen the knockouts come recently, and we haven't seen him fight recently. 
I was looking online and he's got tons of professional fighters backing him. Um, all saying Angelus is a monster. He's a he's a freak. He's gonna kill this kid. And I'm not gonna lie, it it does scare me a little bit. Madalana has been the more active guy, and he's looked good in the ring. But having Lusa, and he trains at Sanford, and all those guys are killers, and they're saying this guy's a killer. I have to stay away. I have a feeling that we're going to be betting either one of these guys going forward for many years, maybe both of them. I'm excited for this fight. I just can't in good faith bet this fight. Next up, we have Jasmine, Jazadu Devicious versus Julia Palastri. Uh, Jasmine is minus 125, Palastri plus 105. Huge height advantage for Jasmine. She's 5'7 versus 5'2. She also has a 5 inch reach advantage, uh, 68 inches versus 63. Um, Jasmine, she's 5 1 Canadian fighter with her one loss coming to the UFC newcomer Elise Reed, who did not look good. She did lose to Elise by split. She has two knockouts and a submission to her name. One was a 52-second knockout via knees to the body. Um, she ut utilizes the tie clinch well and throws brutal knees from that position. She's very aggressive. The knees to the body were set up by a kick to the head. I mean, she's a pretty good striker. She's also a pretty girl, and I know that doesn't mean everything, but the UFC does like to market pretty fighters and i think the ufc is rooting for jasmine in this fight uh julia palastri is eight and two and she's on a six fight winning streak she has finished her last three with a submission and two tkos she comes to fight uh but i have not been impressed with her on the feet she's slow and plotting she does hit this decently hard um but she's taken three to hit one so she's very very hittable uh, what she does do well is defend takedowns, and she is strong. Uh, when she has you on the ground, she is very good at controlling you and searching for subs. Um, the problem is Jasmine is so much bigger, and I see this fight staying on the feet, and Jasmine is going to pick her apart. She's going to get her in that tie clinch, that 5-2 body. To just Her head is waiting for a knee. Uh, Jasmine via knees. That's what I got. Uh, I am going to bet it. And our official bets, I did put out on the um, email list, but we are taking Jasmine, uh, minus 125. We're going to put a couple units on her. We are going to pass on Lusa. We are, I like Lucas uh, Bresky. I didn't put him on the uh, email list, but if you want to throw him in a parlay, I do like him. I don't, I don't see him losing to Dylan Potter. Uh, Durev, I like him, but the layoff, like I said, I also don't mind you throwing him in a parlay. I think he wins this fight. Brandon Lewis versus Mo Miller. Mo Miller's locking tonight. Add him on every fight. He's not losing. Promise. Mo Miller, lock. Eat the chalk. Spend the money. You're going to win with Mo Miller. And then take the dog. Plus 170, you're getting great value on Almeida. Don't worry about the double Russian name and Nazardine Nazardinov. Almeida's the one that fights like Khabib. All right, guys, let's win some money. All right, like and subscribe.